Hello students, previous lecture we discussed excimer lasers in detail. Today we will discuss the solid state lasers and under that heading we will discuss ruby laser in detail. When the active material is in the form of solid, then they come under the category of solid state lasers. And when uh, the most common solid state laser is the ruby laser. So what is the type of solid state materials that are used for doping in the host material? Materials such as crystal or glasses, which have strong absorption bands and high degree of quantum efficiency are doped with small amount of dopants such as krypton, uranium, etc. Characteristics for solid state lasers, the host material should be hard, chemically inert. Solid host material should have excellent optical, thermal and mechanical properties. Host material should not be damaged by the radiation. The commonly used host materials such as crystalline solids and gases under which are the sapphire, yttrium, aluminium, garnet, etc. They are used commonly as the host materials. Now let us begin with the most common one, the ruby laser. See, ruby basically is a crystal of aluminium oxide doped with very small amount of chromium oxide. Chromium ions will replace the aluminium ions in the crystal and this will make the crystal red in color. These are active ions which are responsible for the laser action. But remember, ruby laser operates in pulsed mode. This is one drawback of ruby laser. Another thing, it requires a cooling system. Look at the experimental setup of ruby laser. See, it is consisting of a ruby rod. It is consisting of xenon flash tube for population inversion and two sets of reflecting mirrors, one partial and the other fully and it is consisting of a power supply. So ruby rod is surrounded by helical flash tube with xenon gas. This keeps giving population inversion state is maintained. The, now what happens is large amount of energy is supplied through this xenon flash lamp for pumping process. Because of this reason, the biggest drawback of ruby laser is that it requires a cooling system. Otherwise, it is going to become inefficient. Then secondly, it is a three-level laser setup. As you can see, simple three-level laser setup, metastable state. Here the, we get the red color output of this laser system on the energy level diagram. So the process of stimulated emission takes place. Construction, no doubt, is very simple. But ruby is very hard, durable, and chemically stable. No doubt, it gives a very strong beam. But drawback is that it requires high pumping power for population inversion. Efficiency of ruby laser is low. But still, you can use it in chemistry lab for measurement of electron density, temperature of plasma. It can be used for removing removing uh, the melanin of skin, tattoos, etc. These simple applications can easily be done with the help of ruby laser. Another solid state laser is the neodymium laser. Here what happens is that they have a very narrow line width. They are considered as most useful material doped within various host materials such as yttrium ones, uh, aluminium garnet ones. Now, neodymium laser is also a four-level energy laser capable of producing high power emission. Neodymium ions are the reason for light blue color of crystal and neodymium lasers operate in the continuous wave mode. It can be worked in mode locked Q-switched laser also, look at the very simple diagram here of the neodymium laser. Here you can see this is our uh, electric setup. This is the neodymium rod here, reflecting mirrors and the laser output. A very simple construction here. 
working the energy level diagram once again we see it is getting absorbed here it is falling down and from the meta stable state we are getting the laser light so this is a simple neodymium laser how can we achieve continuous wave and pulsed wave laser in the neodymium yttrium laser? Now, see, they have two absorption bands. And excitation here is done by optical pumping, either by flash lamp for pulse laser or by arc lamp for continuous wave lasers. The advantages, it is strongly absorbed by the YAG crystal and the resulting energy is converted into heat. Disadvantage obviously is that limits the size of the laser rods. Small rods are used. This is another disadvantage, but they are used a lot in industries. Applications go down to eye surgery, cancer treatment, etc., which are few of the um, uh, applications of this laser.